In the workshop of Stuart 504 Boiler Part 2, re-wicking the spirit burner, cleaning up the boiler barrel and refitting the boiler fittings. The other day I had to go over to West Yorkshire and while I was there I called in at Blackgates Engineering and bought several items. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Boyd from the USA for his kind donation of a gift voucher to Blackgates Engineering for me. This week material I didn't buy from Blackgates, I bought this via eBay. Before I clean up the boiler barrel, assemble the boiler and refit the fittings, I'm going to have another go at making the twin spirit burner work properly. Starting by removing all the cotton cloth that I pushed into the box and removing the old wicks that I fitted the other day. This time I'm going to clean inside the tubes. For this I'm using a bottle brush which cleans inside the tubes very well. I repeatedly cleaned the carbon off the bottle brush and used it again until I got the inside of the tubes quite clean. And here I'm cleaning the outside of the tubes using a piece of scotch Brite. Once again, by way of a bit of an experiment, I'm going to reuse the original piece of glass fibre wick that I fitted in the last episode in between a sandwich of the cotton wick and I'm pushing it into the tubes using a metal rod. This was a very easy job and far easier than pulling out the old wick, which took forever. As I'm voicing over and editing this video, it also occurs to me that I bought some more of this cotton wick. This wick is three quarters of an inch wide and the other pieces that I've bought are one inch wide. I have a sneaking suspicion that for this burner to work correctly, the wick down the centre of the tubes needs to be quite densely packed. I'll find out in due course. Initially I pulled the wicks individually out of the hole and now the job's finished I'm pushing all the wicking back into the hole in the box. Time to test it in the outer part of my workshop on my brazing hearth. First I filled the tank with methylated spirit or denatured alcohol. But I overfilled the tank. I did this on purpose because I wanted it to be right to the top and in a moment you'll see it spill out all over the top of the tank. Unlike with other 504 and 501 boilers that I've had, this burner didn't work at all well, hence the experimentation to make it work better than it did. It's all a bit academic really because I've ordered a gas burner from Forest Classics, but that hasn't arrived yet. As you can see here, some of the spirit is leaking out of the tubes onto the vermiculite blocks. Time to light it and see what happens. Put it this way, the outer part of the workshop, which is generally shut off from the rest of the workshop, was very cold. But a couple of minutes after I lit the burner, it got very warm in the outer part of the workshop. Some of this is due to the volume of methylated spirit that's currently burning. After a while, once all of that had evaporated, the burner started burning quite well. Still a bit yellow, but a very healthy flame. I left the burner on the brazing hearth and went back into the main workshop to clean up the boiler barrel. The boiler barrel has been in my acid bath for a full day, and now it's clean on the inside as well as the outside. First of all, I polished the barrel very carefully using my polishing spindle. One thing I have noticed when cleaning up the barrels of 504 boilers is that the copper isn't quite as pure as the stuff I would use these days. It seems to have some very, very tiny black particles in it, and it's reluctant to shine despite being on the polishing spindle as well as being rubbed hard with brasso wadding and here, as you see, with a cloth as well. After repeating this process with the brasso wadding three times, eventually the boiler started to shine. The current clip is showing application number two, and here is application number three. I find this sort of a job very therapeutic. It's not difficult, it's time-consuming and labour-intensive, but only up to a point. And in any case, once the boiler's all back together in a very short time, and once it's been steamed a few times, it will go dull again anyway. Why am I doing all this? Well, really, to show people who haven't got a 504 boiler what to do if ever you do get one. And what do I want a 504 boiler for anyway? I have a Castle Steam V6. The answer is, I just like 504 boilers. I think they're really nice things. Because they're water tube boilers, they hold a lot of water, and they're very much more than a pot-type boiler owing to the Babcock tubes underneath not to mention the superheater in the centre tube. Now the boiler's polished up and back together, it's time to refit the fitting, starting with the safety valve, followed by the steam tap. I've removed the aluminium washers, I really hate these things. I'm refitting the steam tap with a selection of shim washers to get it in the correct position. In the end, I found a combination of three that allowed me to tighten it into the correct position. Each time I did a dummy run first to find out what the position was, 
Finally, when I found the correct position, I applied some Loctite 542, and here I'm screwing it in place for the final time. This is just right. I'm not over tightening the thread, it's just perfect. The next part to be fitted is the pressure gauge siphon. And once again, I'm using copper washers, one each side of the banjo union, instead of using the aluminium washers, which once again were both corroded. As I remove the blanking plug from this bottom hole, this is the one where I'm going to fit a check valve, I noticed that it was extremely tight in the hole. So tight, in fact, that the threads in the bush were slightly distorted, and here I'm cleaning the threads using a 5 16 by 32 threads per inch tap. And once again, using a couple of shim washers, I fitted the check valve in place. I need a new water gauge, and luckily I saved the one from the Stuart HB6 boiler. I'm going to use that. Before I do that, it needs cleaning. It's quite full of lime scale. So I decanted some acid into this small red plastic box, and I'm putting the fittings in the box, where they will remain for 24 hours. This should get rid of the lime scale. As I mentioned before, the acid I use is quite weak. And that's it for this episode. I'll be back in 24 hours. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.